Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we shall now proceed to this first session of the Gaul Dialogue International Maritime Conference 2023. The focal point of the first session will be maritime security concerns. This session will be moderated by Dr. Rohan Pereira and consists of three speakers, and the session shall precede the lunch break. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now invite Dr. Rohan Pereira to take the seat as the moderator and also request the distinguished speakers, Vice Admiral Tarun Shopti, Director General Naval Operations of Indian Navy, Rear Admiral Li Peng Cheng, Deputy Chief of Staff of Chinese PLA Navy, and Rear Admiral Eric Rattenberg, Reserve Director Mar Maritime Operations, United States Pacific Fleet. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a round of applause. It's a pleasure to be back in Gold once again for the Gold Dialogue. And I take pleasure, in particular, in welcoming my fellow pan panelists, Vice Admiral uh, Sobit, Deputy Chief of uh, Staff of the Indian Navy. Uh, Vice Admiral Lee, Lee Pen Chang and Director of uh, Maritime Operations, Rear Admiral Eric Ruttenberg of the United States. As far as the conduct of the proceedings are concerned, we, we will follow the rules of the previous panel. So each speaker will have five minutes and we will enforce that to ensure that we make best use of the time that is now available to us, which is roughly about 45 minutes. Uh, by way of uh, introductory remarks, we have s seen the evolution of a treaty regime from the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea way back in 1982, coming down to the patchwork treaty treaties like the Convention on Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the safe Safety of Maritime Navigation, down to more recent um, instruments. But all these have resulted in incremental progress in different areas of the legal regime. I would it suffice to mention the concept of transit passage through interna international straits used for navigation, which became quite a uh, hot issue in the context of the South, South China Seas. And also the question of safety and security of uh, undersea cables, submarine cables. So these issues have all come up and dealt with in different ways. Uh, in these negotiations. So let me, with those remarks, let me request our first speaker, uh, Vice Admiral uh, Sobit of the Indian Navy. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, members of the diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen, I've had my session very abruptly cut short from about 20 minutes to five minutes. So it's going to be a big challenge uh, from the planned 20 minutes to reduce uh, and condense my thoughts in five minutes. Nonetheless, I will embark on this uh, particular uh, journey 
but let me thank the Sri Lankan Navy first of all for uh, organizing the International Maritime Dialogue, uh, the conference rather. Uh, it's platforms such as these that give us an opportunity to discuss uh, contemporary and future challenges. And uh, as uh, we have heard from the delegates in the morning, that is what is uh, one factor in enhancing cooperation and collaboration to find uh, collective solutions. So uh, I am uh, Vice Admiral Tarun Sopti. I am the Deputy Chief of Naval Staff of the Indian Navy. And that is the subject of my talk uh, this morning. Uh, so let me begin with the underlying principle of India's approach uh, to this particular situation. Uh, and that's not just for the region, but to the world in large. Uh, which is to put quite simply and as articulated by external affairs minister, uh, India will grow with others and not separately. And this in a sense uh, sums up our outlook. Uh, in order to holistically comprehend the implications of the power play that we've been talking about, I will merely give you the gist of my thoughts, uh, literally and uh, figuratively. I will lean on that acronym GIST, uh, in which is encompassing geography, international relations, security, and uh, trade and economics. Uh, do we have the way of changing the slide? Uh, can somebody change the slide for me? OK, thank you. I got that. So that's what I've been talking about. Uh, Actually, I will not dwell too much on geography. I've just made a mention because some of our panelists in the morning talked about it, uh, shared some statistics about the importance of the, of the Indian Ocean region, uh, the number of nations, the, the population that is affected by this region, and the, the potential for the economy, uh, economic growth, also the amount of oil that is passing through. Uh, when I come to international relations uh, of this region, uh, I would say the global geopolitical uh, relations as they are evolving uh, significantly impact what is happening in the Indian Ocean region also, and uh, primarily because that's affected by uh, the geography of the Indian Ocean, which impacts uh, international relations. And uh, what is happening is that uh, there are three, three, there's cooperation and there is competition which coexist. And uh, with the centrality of the Indian Ocean region, uh, the great power uh, competition, which is uh, returning, uh, make this uh, resource-rich region uh, an arena for jostling between states for influence, resources, markets, and em energy, amongst others. Uh, I talk. I move to the the security aspect uh, of the the gist that I'm talking about, and the reshaping of the global. Competition is altering the geostrategic equations, uh, which affects the security environment. Certainly, it's not as stable as it used to be. And uh, there are, it's characterized by a multitude of conventional as well as unconventional threats. Uh, there are a lot of maritime security threats. And eventually, that leads me to the T of the gist, which is trade in economics. And if we do not have the, an environment where trade can move unfettered and there is reason to believe that there will be threat, there is obviously the impact that comes on the trade in economics, uh, which affects uh, not just this region, because the, the seabound trade, just about 20% of the seabound trade uh, is uh, in, in the Indian Ocean region is between the Indian Ocean region countries. 80% uh, of it is cross-regional, and therefore the interests of not just the IUR countries, but also others uh, across the globe uh, have an interest in maintaining, uh, the core interest in maintaining this region free uh, for unhindered commerce. Uh, IUR Navy is actually through sustained presence and credible response must add value uh, to the to to their presence and to the region. And I come to this uh, vision, which is to have uh, what we have called SAGAR, which is security and growth for all in the region. And we invite everybody to participate in that vision. Uh, as has been stated, uh, there is uh, like-mindedness in this particular thought of A, which is the assurance and trust. Uh, Assurance that uh, we will be there to step in and provide help 
to all our partners in the region. Uh, the Indian Navy certainly uh, professes that and tries to demonstrate that at every opportunity, be it humanitarian relief, disaster relief. Uh, COVID-19 was an example. Uh, and we try and be the first responders in the region to give assurance and trust that we are there. And we are hoping that uh, other actors also uh, participate in this uh, thought process. Uh, leveraging competencies that we have, that is a matter of cooperation actually. Collective maritime competencies are something that need to be built. Uh, and uh, partnered, no country alone has got the capability to do it all alone. And the only way to do it is to be partners, uh, have a common thought process, take it from there, and uh, everybody bring something to the table. And together, as I would say, I have one, you have one, together we have two. So uh, that's the thought process. Uh, and as we unite, as a united force, uh, we can leverage each other's competencies to build uh, uh, value, add value to the region, and uh, try and diminish the, the impact of the power play that comes in this particular region. Uh, we have a number of uh, dialogues and multilateral organizations dealing with this. We had talked about it in the morning. And therefore, I come to the last part of the value, which is engagements. And our engagements, I believe, should be sh based on a shared goal of enhancing the region's maritime security quotient. In this endeavor, uh, uh, we, we aim to find uh, regional solutions to regional problems through cooperation. And uh, endeavors such as the Gulf Dialogue, of course, will uh, further harmonize collective endeavors in the Indian Ocean region, adding more value to the efforts of like-minded states. Now, through a contested present into an uncertain future, uh, what we must collectively guard against are the nations that uh, only pursue self-interest, uh, and they hold self-interest above the uh, common interests of uh, the community and uh, at the cost of regional stability. So this unnecessary contestation that this creates, uh, it can start in the unconventional domain and has the potential for spreading into conventional conflict. And the effort here is to try and attenuate uh, the power play uh, through uh, multilateral cooperation, an effort to understand each other's perspective and take it, uh, try and remove the bias in our individual thinking and take it to the level where we can uh, build mutual assurance, mutual trust, and uh, take it forward uh, to a, a point where we bring in greater stability in this area, attenuate the, the effects of power play, and uh, therefore uh, allow the maritime trade economics uh, to prosper unhindered. Uh, I believe that uh, maritime nations are necessarily a maritime community, and oceans are our common heritage as well as destiny. May I kindly request the distinguished so my last line, power play in the Indian Ocean region can only be eased through a common vision of regional security and collaborative effort to achieve this vision. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now may I call upon Vice Admiral Li <coughs> Peng Chang of China. Your Excellencies, Admirals, dear colleagues, friends, good afternoon. Uh, uh, the Honorable Speaker said that the Honorable Speaker said that the Honorable Speaker said the Honorable the mentioned that uh, we have only five minutes for the presentation. I think it's uh, too short for me, who have fly eight hours from China to here. Uh, Originally, we were informed that we have 20 minutes. Uh, however, we will try to uh, speed up the presentation. 
呃，非常荣幸来到印度洋下的明珠斯里兰卡参加第十一届高尔对话。呃，首先呢，我代表中国海军司令员董军上将、政委约华兹上将对会议的召开表示热烈的祝贺，向斯里兰卡国防部海军对中国海军的邀请表示感谢，向与会的嘉宾致以诚挚的问候。Uh, I'm very glad to come to Sri Lanka, the pearl of the、uh, Indian Ocean, to attend the 11th Gulf Dialogue. First, on behalf of、uh, Admiral Dong Jun, Commander of the Chinese Imperial Navy, and Admiral Yuan Huazhi, Political Commissar of the Chinese Imperial Navy, I'd like to extend our warm congratulations toward the、uh, successful organization of this event, and、uh, our sincere greeting to the distinguished guests who presented here today. 呃，下面我为要加强各国海军合作，携手维护海上安全做个发言。Now I'd like to share my view with the topic of、uh, strengthen navy to navy cooperation and join hands in maintaining maritime security. 呃，习近平主席指出，我们人类居住的这个蓝色的星球，不是被海洋分割成了各个孤岛，而是被海洋连接成了命运共同体，各国人民安危与共。呃、uh, ，President Xi Jinping pointed out. This blue planet that we human can dwell on is not divided by the ocean into isolated islands, but connected by it as a community of shared future. People of all countries enjoy safety and face danger as a whole. 呃，中国政府呃领导人在这方面有很多的呃讲话和呃要求，呃，我这里就不呃赘述了。So I will not repeat the.、Uh, Demonstrations and the, the uh, uh, speeches by our president. 自古以来，印度洋就是全球贸易能源的重要通道，是有海上生命线的支撑。Since the ancient times, the Indian Ocean has been renowned as the、uh, lifeline of the sea for its、uh, important role in the flow of global trade and energy. 但当前印度洋面临着诸多的安全风险。海盗、跨国犯罪、恐怖活动等等，时有发生。海上走私偷渡、难民问题困扰着许多沿海国。台风、海啸等自然灾害威胁沿岸民众生命安全。海洋生态环境保护、气候变化等问题一突出，地区冲突还未止息，给海洋和平稳定带来了不确定性。However, it is now faced with various security risks.、Uh, piracy, transnational crimes, and terrorism happen from time to time. time. Coastal countries are troubled with maritime smuggling, human trafficking, and refugees. Natural disasters like typhoon and tsunami threaten the life and the prosperity property of people in the coastal areas. Problems like marine ecological and environmental protection and climate change are becoming increasingly prominent. The region is still far from conflict-free. All these have brought uncertainty to the peace and the stability at sea. 呃，我高度这个赞赞成啊，赞赏这个刚才呃总统阁下讲的印度洋的呃重要问题是发展经济问题。I totally agree with the uh the president of Sri Lanka who mentioned that the uh the most important thing for the Indian Ocean is the uh economic growth. 海军是国家海上力量的主体，肩负着维护海洋安全和发展的重要责任。所以需要我们共同应对海上安全挑战，走互利共赢的海上安全之路。As a member of the National Maritime Force, the Navy is charged with the、uh, important duty of maintaining peace and the development of the ocean. So、uh, it requires us to、uh, strengthen our、uh, mutual, mutual benefit and the women cooperation in maritime security. 近年来，中国海军秉持海洋命运共同体理念，积极践行全球安全倡议，积极同印度洋沿岸国家开展各领域海上安全合作，始终做海洋和平的建设者、海洋发展的贡献者、海洋秩序的维护者、公共安全产品的提供者。In recent years, the p e r i Navy has been、uh, actively carrying out maritime security cooperation in various areas with the、uh, Indian Ocean countries, and made our due contributions in building peace. Boosting growth, maintaining order, and providing public security products. We actively undertake cooperation on maritime security and maintain peace. 
uh, we have been actively fulfilling common maritime security obligations and duties and maintaining the security of international maritime passageways uh, through the uh, escort operations in the Gulf of Aden. We have provided safe escort for over 7,200 vessels of both Chinese and foreign flags. We have actively carried out HADR operations, for example, emergency provision of uh, fresh water for Maldives, uh, search and rescue after the uh, MH370 disaster, uh, delivery of disaster relief supplies to Tonga and uh, Vanuatu, and the assistance to uh, Philippines after the uh, typhoon disaster. We have carried out our Mission Harmony series free medical services with our hospital ship Akpis, which uh, benefited over 260,000 people in her nine voyages. We uh, we have actively conducted overseas non-combatant evacuation operations at Libya, Yemen, and Sudan. Uh, in April this year, the Pyrenees Navy warships uh, reached uh, Port Sudan to evacuate 940 Chinese citizens and 231 foreign citizens. We have actively participated in uh, building regional maritime security mechanisms. Uh, we have uh, participated in uh, cooperation platforms such as uh, uh, Indian, Indian Ocean Naval Symposium and the Guard Dialogue. We have uh, established bilateral Navy-to-Navy -Navy dialogue mechanisms with uh, several Indian Ocean countries, and uh, we have carried out extensive exchanges with various navies and actively participated in the development of guidance of multinational joint operations in areas like uh, maritime rescue and disaster response to jointly respond to threats and challenges at sea. Uh, this is the Pierre Navy's 10th Guard Dialogue. We have carried out extensive exchanges and discussions with various navies and achieved important consensus. I believe that uh, with the joint, sincere, and the persistent effort and the cooperation among various navies, our good wish of building a peaceful, safe, prosperous, open, and beautiful Indian Ocean will definitely come true. Uh, here I have some several points to share with you. First, we need to promote exchanges at different levels to lay a solid foundation of mutual trust. Uh, Trust between navies needs to be cultivated and nurtured by all parties. We need to keep strengthening the friendship and trust between Navy leaders. We need to carry out extensive exchanges on defense and security policies. And we also need to strengthen the exchanges between line officers and sailors to promote their mutual respect, trust, and the interoperability. May I request the vice admiral to begin to wind up? Okay. okay. Next, me also. Uh, the Pyrenees. Uh, is uh, aimed at uh, building the uh, um, cooperation mechanism with various navies and uh, tries to uh, expand the uh, cooperation and exchanges and the communication. 
呃，包括刚才我与美国美美国海军代表团团长，呃，太平洋舰队作战局长张军，呃，阁下交流的时候，我们俩的认识都是高度一致的。呃、uh, ，and、uh, I share the same view with the, our U.S. Navy friend, uh, who was sitting on the platform here. 第二，呃，我就念一下标题啊，呃，加强海上行动配合，提升协同应对威胁的能力。And second, we need to strengthen coordination of maritime operations to improve our capabilities of a coordinated response to threats. Thank you very much. Mm. I'll give the floor to the next speaker. We have one more speaker on the list. Thank you. <coughs> I now have the pleasure in requesting Rear Admiral Eric Rodenberg. All right. Hey, thank you, Dr. Pereira, for uh, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it's an honor to be here with naval leaders and regional maritime stakeholders from around the globe to participate in these critical maritime discussions. First, I'd like to thank our host, Sri Lanka Navy, as well as Sri Lanka Navy Commander Vice Admiral Pereira. Thank you for hosting, planning, and supporting this impressive consortium of global leaders and for facilitating the important discussions. I'm honored to represent the United States Navy in these discussions to provide our perspective on emerging security challenges and opportunities for collaboration as we all work together to achieve regional maritime security and the enforcement of international maritime law. On behalf of our Chief of Naval Operations and the U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander, I offer congratulations to the people of Sri Lanka as you celebrate your 75th anniversary of independence this year. We're also celebrating 75 years of bilateral relationships between Sri Lanka and the United States. Today, we celebrate the United States Navy's 248th birthday. Our respective navies are tasked with protection of our nations at sea in order to defend freedom, preserve economic prosperity, and keep the seas open and free. It is most fitting that we gather, this gathering takes place in a country located astride the world's most strategic sea lanes, sea lines of communication, a critical piece to regional maritime security and international maritime law. The Indo-Pacific region is one of the most politically dynamic and economically influential areas in the world, hosting more than half of the world's population, nearly two-thirds of the world's economy, and seven of the world's largest militaries. The maritime domain is therefore the lifeblood, not only for this region, but on a global scale. Security in the Indo-Pacific has become a prerequisite for the prosperity of world trade. Every day, half of the global container cargo and 70% of shipborne energy supply flows through this area. Because of this, we all have a stake in keeping it open, free, and peaceful in the Pacific. Maritime security is no longer just threats to seaports or infrastructures. It includes threats to sovereignty, and livelihoods of coastal communities, as well as measures to promote economic development by sustainable use of the seas. Growing threats in the maritime domain, such as piracy, smuggling, uh, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and human trafficking continues to threaten our ability to use the sea freely to feed our people and drive our economies. It was great to see Sri Lanka Navy and Indo-Pacific Command co-hosting the Indo-Pacific Environmental Security Forum this past August, where many of these topics were discussed in great detail. As we've seen over the past few years, the global pandemic not only challenged our public health systems, but also brought about observable increases in smuggling, illegal drug trading, and human trafficking in the, Indo Indo in the Indian Ocean region. As global crisis, conflicts, climate threats increase across the world, so do illicit activities like human trafficking illegal drugs, and piracy. And while this region has worked to respond to those maritime crimes together, we can and must do better. It's more important now than ever for us to work together to promote the rules-based international order so that we can tackle these complex transnational security challenges head on and achieve sustainable and lasting stability. For coastal nations, fish are one of the most critical resources. IUU fishing is causing not only ecological damage and food shortages, but also causing dramatic, uh, drastic environmental and economic effects to countries worldwide. More than 90% of global fishing stocks are fully exploited, overexploited, or significantly depleted. 
Today, the world's fish stocks are under stress, not only from growing consumption, demand, and changing ecosystems, but also from deliberate efforts to exploit gaps in existing governance structures. And we saw firsthand power of collaboration, coordination, and information sharing during uh, the global uh, pandemic. We also practice humanitarian assistance and disaster response and exercises that we've successfully worked together to respond with humanitarian aid and disaster relief around the world. What we practice most during these exercises is the network, networking together, building partnerships and sharing information and resources to rapidly provide urgent supplies, essential care, and initial relief to alleviate human suffering. Now, earlier this year, we participated in a cooperation of flow readiness and training, CARAT, in Sri Lanka with Sri Lanka Navy. The focus was to increase proficiency in humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and maritime security capabilities. In addition to the Sri Lankan Navy, it included participants in the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, the Maldives National Defense Force, and the Sri Lankan Air Force. These regular interactions are critical to increasing our maritime domain awareness and providing opportunities to practice interoperability so that when disaster strikes, we can all band together to respond and help alleviate the burden that one nation should not have to carry at all. Looking forward, the U.S. Navy will continue to be a steady presence and reliable partner in this region, such that we can learn from each other and build the relationships and trust that will be critical in times of need. We'll continue to press forward with information sharing initiatives because as nations cooperate in building common maritime picture of potential threats, regional security and confidence among neighboring countries increases significantly. Our efforts will not demand binary choices between competing systems. Rather, they will strengthen individual nations' sovereignty through capacity building and maritime domain awareness. We'll continue to work closely with minded, like-minded navies to support support sustained favorable regional balances of power that safeguard security, prosperity, and the free and open international order. The Indian Ocean region has never been more important to global commerce and regional stability, and despite the transnational maritime threats we are challenged with today, our shared future is bright. The international rules-based system has fueled a prosperity that enables hundreds of millions of people in the Indo-Pacific region to rise above poverty. Only together can we face common threats of the 21st century. The United States Navy is committed to working as equals with any nation that embraces these time-tested principles. Our fellow Indo-Pacific nations should be free to choose, free to prosper, and free to chart their own course. It's great to be here with all of you, and thank you very much. Thank you, Rear Admiral. May I? Inquire from the previous speakers, they want to add anything more to what already been said? Q&A. Q&A, okay. Then we shall now proceed to the Q&A. He can, he can help me. There are a number of uh, I think there's, there's one question, Dr. Rera. Usually between uh, the lunch and the panel discussions, there's always a difficult period, but I think we have a question. <laughs> uh, sir, if you had uh, raised that point before, I wouldn't have taken the microphone. <laughs> so 
apologies to my dear colleagues here. We often hear about Sri Lanka and many other countries asking for not getting Sri Lanka or the Indian Ocean a theater of competition between great powers. So can I have a comment on that from the distinguished speakers? We want to have the Indian Ocean far from this rivalry so often spoken about in, the, in research, in closed door, behind closed doors, but not at rest uh, in, this, uh, in this fora as yet. So can I have your comment on that? Thank you. Is your question addressed to a particular panelist or is it in general terms? I, I think uh, we need to direct it to uh, great power competition. I think okay. direct to, to all of us. We are the, yep. uh, between uh, uh, the PLA Navy, the Indian Navy, and the United States, uh, we represent probably the three largest navies in the world. And, and so I think all of us uh, own, own that, that answer to, to your question. Uh, I don't. I don't believe the uh, that that, per, that perhaps great power competition in the Indian Ocean uh, is a uh, driving factor. What I believe that uh, we all have an interest, and that uh, the world has an interest in, is maintaining uh, a peaceful environment that addresses climate change, uh, fishing, smuggling. Uh, abuses uh, that are uh, around the world. So uh, this just happens to be one of those many regions uh, that is, is severely impacted. And so how we all work together, uh, and whether that's through exercises uh, and truly in a multilateral uh, way of working with navies uh, across the world uh, to address some of those things. And, and whether they're in South uh, China Sea, working with countries to look at how we do humanitarian aid and disaster relief. Uh, those are the important things of, of taking care of people and addressing uh, world needs. So as we, uh, I think, uh, move forward, we'll continue to, to look at uh, where we can participate with other nations to certainly drive uh, things that we can help uh, address, and whether that's sending the USNS Mercy, uh, a, 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 a hospital ship uh, out to the South China Sea to, to do island uh, hopping and, and help uh, various uh, smaller countries. I think those are all kind of role and have a, have a role here, but I'm not sure if, uh, if that answers your, your question or not, but I'll let the other gentlemen uh, have some time before lunch. Uh, so to that, I'll just add that uh, <clears throat> I think if you look at it, the Indian Ocean region is fairly stable and peaceful area. And uh, we have not had uh, conflict in this area for, for the longest of times. And uh, the credit goes to all the people, uh, all the nations, uh, regional as well as extra-regional to have ensured that we remain fairly stable. Uh, as there is a churning in geopolitical uh, environment, there is bound to be competition. And I think what we are talking about is that we should, be, uh, we should be anticipating that this competition or the power play as it may be otherwise termed, I call it competition, it's a more benign word, should not lead to conflict. And uh, the stated intent of all the major players who have presence in the Indian Ocean region or have their interest in the Indian Ocean region, the stated intent uh, is unambiguous that they do not <clears throat> want conflict to come into this area and uh, affect the stability of this area. And therefore, it's just a matter of working with each other to make sure that this uh, stable environment sustains and the competition does not escalate into conflict uh, so that our mutual interests, which are not just regional, but which are actually the global mutual interests, uh, do not get adversely affected. Thank you very, very much. Yes, please. 
。呃，刚才呃两位将军讲的，呃，我都赞同。呃、uh, ，I agree with my colleagues。呃，关于这个问题，呃，我的发言材料在后半段是有的，呃，但是没有讲。I I have this uh answer in the uh the untold part of my presentation. 呃，时间关系，用我们外交部发言人的风格，我简单说一下。So I will put like this question in simple sentences. 呃，中国过去、现在和将来都不会谋求在印度洋搞军事呃这种竞争。呃、uh, ，China has never has not is not doing or will do the、uh, seek for the、uh, military competition in the Indian Ocean. 呃，我们有限的存在，也主要是为了维护我们的海外利益。呃，大家可以看到，主要是亚丁湾护航、撤侨，还有其他的一些呃活动。The limited presence, the limited presence of the PRA and the PRA Navy in the Indian Ocean is only for the、uh, maintaining the、uh, national interest of China, as you can see in the、uh, escort operations in the Gulf of Aden. The、uh, Evacuation, the non-combat evacuation operations, and and other activities. 呃，一个安全、稳定、繁荣的印度洋，符合中国的最根本利益。呃 ，safe and secure and stable and peaceful Indian Ocean is for the、uh, best interest, serves for the best interest of China. 呃，我们非常愿意和印度、斯里兰卡等印度洋国家和美国等。呃，加强合作。We would like to、uh, strengthen cooperation with Indian Ocean countries like India and Sri Lanka, and including countries outside the Indian Ocean like the United States, to、uh, have, together maintain the、uh, stability, peace, and the tranquility of the Indian Ocean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Certainly, the idea that regional solutions must be found. Regional problems that came out in the discussion, and of course, collaboration and cooperation must <coughs> replace competition. So that would be a general sum up of what we heard. Are there any other comments? So there was this question of submarine safety of submarine cables, uh, which has been very very. Uh, dealt with by the law of the sea convention, in just one brief article. But today we know the importance of submarine cables. The internet we depend on submarine cables and not on uh, not satellites or other. So I would like to hear something from the panelists or the audience on the aspect of preservation of submarine cables. I remember last time we had a. Meeting in Goa, we went and visited the little beyond Goa in Matra, the station for monitoring submarine cables. Yes, please. Uh, so, very brief remarks on that. Uh, undoubtedly, as you mentioned, uh, that global communications depend on submarine cables, and. Uh, it's not just true for the Indian Ocean region, but it's true for every other region. Uh, and I think we recognize that there is not enough being done on the protection of uh, undersea cables. Of course, uh, there are certain areas where the depth is so much that uh, it's extremely difficult to access in any way, which also means that it's difficult to damage uh, by any inimical interests. Uh, mostly the access would be at the landing stations uh, where they uh, where the coast shells and eventually uh, land up at the coastal stations. Uh, I would only comment that uh, we need to have, uh, we need to build mutual cooperation in this and as of now there is nobody taking leadership on uh, the protection of uh, submarine cables and I'm just hoping that uh, as we go along uh, there is something uh, that develops on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eric? Yes. Can I, sir? Thank you, sir. 
Uh, I am Rear Admiral Alam from uh, Bangladesh uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. My question regarding to submarine cable. You see, um, the, the submarine cable company uh, earns around uh, almost uh, uh, 10 million dollar uh, every day transaction, you know, uh, every day transaction, and which is a quite high amount. And there is IPC, ICPC. Why the owners of uh, making sure that the submarine cable uh, should be in right shape and right order should be only on the coastal station, not on the I ICPC, there, uh, which was established in 1948? Thank you, sir. Would anyone like to respond? But I think this is an important issue to which not much attention has been paid either in the conventions or in state practice. So this is something we need to look at more closely. So if I may share, I'm Admiral Kolumbagi, former Navy Chief. In fact, Sri Lanka came out with a national strategy for the protection of submarine cables in the region. And many other countries showed interests at that time. This was about three years ago. And I think we need to build yeah, upon yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the we develop it. Yeah, I think because it's common to all of us. Uh, and we all know 95% of our data comes through the submarine cable. So there is always already a mechanism in Sri Lanka. I think our foreign ministry was leading that. So maybe we can build upon that uh, to have a strategy for the Indian Ocean. So this is my response to uh, what Dr. Rohan Pera said. But since the three major navies are present on the panel, I would like to uh, ask your views on one aspect. Now we heard from the morning we have so many forums to discuss maritime security, maritime safety and since of late maritime environmental protection is a key topic that we keep discussing whether it is IORA, IONS, Western Naval Symposium, uh, Indian Ocean Commission, we have so many. And we always, now Gaul Dialogue uh, is another one, um, Goa Maritime Conclave, NMA, uh, all these are great uh, discussion forums. And we always, after lengthy discussions, we produce outcome documents. But unfortunately, I have not seen anyone trying to synergize these outcome into some coherent, uh, forward-looking uh, concept. Now, I think it's high time we gather these outcome of all these forums, all these events, and someone sitting down somewhere analyzing it and come out with something concrete and positive. Uh, otherwise, we will keep on discussing this, and finally, we end up practically next to nothing. So I like to hear the views of the three major navies present on this panel. Your thoughts on this kind of an approach. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, remark. May I ask uh, Admiral Vayen uh, Jayaratna whether he is uh, like to say something on this aspect? I know he's very yeah, much. Th uh, thank you, uh, moderator. Uh, thank you, panel. Uh, for others, I'm uh, Rear Admiral Vayan Jaratna, retired former Chief Hydrographer to the Government at the Navy. Right now, I'm working as a consultant on undersea cable for United Nations Office of Drug and Crimes. Uh, for since we talk about the undersea cables, let me explain what is happening. About five years back, United Nations understood that submarine cables are a critical infrastructure of the world. So as a result, UNODC is facilitating the coastal state to put up a national protection and resilience plan for undersea cables. It is ongoing and it was first introduced in Sri Lanka about four, three years back. Right now it is uh, being introduced to the regional countries. What is trying to do is to bring the coastal state responsibility into the protection of submarine cables. While the submarine cables that connect the far east and far west that goes on the Indian Ocean are uh, going through the jurisdiction of Sri Lanka and several other countries. And there are 10 cables that is connected to Sri Lanka. 
it is very important that the state have some responsibility and some resilience action plan in the protection because all these cables are protected by commercial agreements that are very comprehensive that have the insurance as well as contingency plans embedded into these commercial agreements so that part is taken care of but not the coastal state so that is where we stand this is for all everybody's understanding thank you thank you admiral jayaratna in fact i recall several years ago when the present president was the prime minister he had a conference on the oceans and this issue of submarine cables came up there so it's a, it's a recurring theme and it's a recurring concern which must be translated into 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 concrete action so thank you very much are there any other questions clarifications either from the panel or from the audience uh, 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 i would like to respond some of the questions. I knew the Admiral back in uh, 2012 when he was the uh, Sri Lankan Navy commander, and uh, I was then the uh, head of the operations department of the PRA Navy. Uh, 第一，我认为这个会议本身就是一个成果。我们斯里兰卡海军，斯里兰卡政府把这么多国家的海军，呃，高级代表团，呃，集合到这里来，共讨这个商量印度洋方向的安全与发展。这本身就是一个成果。体
there isn't enough synergy, there is so much talk, uh, there is no synergy in action. Uh, when we had a unipolar or a bipolar world, there were, there were distinct leaders in the world and these leaders uh, took the agenda forward. In a multilateral world, uh, there are no leaders as such and we have uh, so many multilateral constructs that <clears throat> if there was one nation or one grouping that was to take the leadership, to take the agenda forward, say, to bring in synergy, uh, which would be their perspective, would it be seen as uh, that nation is uh, building influence or hegemony to take it even further? And then what would be the reaction in a multilateral construct? So therefore, in a multipolar world uh, and where there are many multilateral constructs, uh, I would say that it's very difficult for anybody to really seize the leadership and take it forward. That doesn't, because that undoes the concept of multilateral construct. And, uh, but I would, in fact, I am an optimistic and I would say that movement is slow, uh, but I would say we are moving towards synergy. It's not as evident and not as perceptible, but with these plurality of multilateral constructs, there is movement, there is a positive movement, and we are eventually moving in the right direction of synergy. And I leave this thought, uh, is it possibly a small country that can take uh, leadership? Then, uh, you know, it's non-threatening. Uh, we have to contribute towards building that capacity for a, no, for a smaller country uh, to take the leadership in certain aspects. And I, I would suggest uh, Sri Lanka is, uh, is a suitable candidate for that. Because you have made sure that, uh, I mean, your stated position is neutral, equidistance from uh, any power play, any, any large countries. So why not Sri Lanka take the initiative? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Admiral, for your suggestion. Uh, any <coughs> further reactions, comments? Sir, <coughs> sir good afternoon, sir. I'm Major General Chandana Vikram Singh, Director General General Staff. At the outset, I would like to thank the Navy for organizing this event. And <coughs> It's a great honor and privilege to be talk to the forum where this, the largest three navies in the world, who is, and being Sri Lanka, we, we see, we talk about the 75th of uh, independence, and out of it that we see the protection of power is being hampered to Sri Lankan independence as well as the Sri Lanka security. And it's called the, uh, particularly, the Sri Lanka, due to the power protection of the world powers, Sri Lanka being affected the sub-threshold warfare. And because of that, sub, we have been influenced, particularly on the soft power, as well as the hard power. And our progress has been hindered in many times. So therefore, I believed, the, as a previous occasion, the Sec uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, she articulated that Sri Lanka's important the neutrality. The based on neutrality, as well as yours, one, our progress and Sri Lanka's geographical location is also important. So therefore, I believe this uh, sub-threshold warfare or the effect of somebody's power is hampered in the Sri Lankan project. So to understand the respect of Sri Lanka's neutrality is important and even the stakeholders of the Sri Lanka, uh, the forces as well as the Navy is doing exemplary work. So therefore it's important to give you sir and you, I would like to talk, I would like anybody to answer the sub-threshold warfare or the effect of by the projection of power and effect of Sri Lanka security. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any reaction to that? So, uh, you're referring to the uh, the effect of. Uh, the power play on, on Sri Lanka itself where the sub-threshold uh, uh, effects are playing and uh, hampering the development of Sri Lanka. <clears throat> I, I don't think uh, any power is uh, meaning to do that. I don't know if uh, there has been an in inadvertent effect because of that. I think uh, if they're all, if there is competition at all, <clears throat> That competition is aimed to build capacity in the partner countries. <clears throat> so
so we might have uh, two or three players uh, you know i'll take the case of sri lanka uh, participating but the intent uh, behind this is actually to build capacities within the country and sometimes you know the competition comes up in building capacities but i think for the recipient country uh, it's a, it's a win win situation because there are multiple powers who are uh, willing to step in and, and build capacities uh, uh, so therefore i probably have a different view that it actually uh, i would say it does not adversely affect the recipient country in fact it positively affects the recipient country in uh, whatever is the outcome of whatever competition that might take place uh, in the region thank you thank you vice admiral if there are no further comments i think the yeah yes uh, thank you very much uh, i'm professor gamini kirvella professor emeritus university of peradeniya and presently executive director uh, bandar naika center for international studies uh, we talk much about rule based indian notion and stability of the indian notion very recently there were two rulings by ijc international court of Just justice one regarding diago garcia another one relating to the uh, philippines philippines claim about this island both countries united states and china did not want to honor that ruling because they claim that it compromise and contradict their national interest in the in this context how can we talk of from the small state's point of view, rule-based order in the Indian Ocean. Thank you. This is for uh, to uh, rep the uh, panelist representing China and the United States. Thank you. So, yes, uh, currently I'm not uh, uh, completely aware of what the uh, U United States uh, stance was on the on the ruling from uh, the uh, the UN and the uh, international uh, justice but we do strongly believe that the sovereign rights of nations uh, are critically important and where we can help protect uh, small nations uh, can keep uh, control of, uh, of of small islands uh, free to uh, to their economy uh, then we are certainly going to to help that uh, and we and we do that every day with uh, with our friends and and nations uh, from around from around the world sailing together uh, to show that uh, that we believe in in the rights of uh, of sovereignty so I'm not sure uh, what which part that you're uh, actually uh, questioning but certainly uh, we have seen uh, uh, a lot of this in the in the press lately with uh, the Philippines and and their ability to uh, uh, to resupply the second Thomas Shoal uh, just as a as an example um, but that is uh, again the rights of, of nations uh, and the comp you know, again when we look at uh, where do these uh, small islands exist, and and then look at historically where where the where they've uh, you know, what nation it falls under. Uh, we try and uh, just we sail in the international waters. We uh, and and believe that every nation uh, in the in the world should have uh, have rights to uh, to do that. So um, certainly we may not sign a a document, but we certainly live up to that law. Um, Whereas uh, certainly in, in some cases, nations uh, will sign uh, uh, support to a document but not live to the law. So I, I think it's very important that, that we all look at uh, how we address the rights of, of sovereign nations around the world. So I your answer to this question. 
I want to answer this from uh, two levels. 第一，我们今天是高尔论坛，我们是在高尔，是在斯里兰卡的高尔，是在讨论印度洋方向的事情。呃、uh, ，first。Here we are at the Gaur dialogue, which focuses on the、uh, issues of Indian Ocean. 呃，南海的问题可以在专门的会议上再讨论。The issues in the、uh, South China Sea can be discussed in other circumstances. 呃，南海，我我们政府在南海问题上的这个政策和立场是非常非常明确的。The Points and positions of the、uh, Chinese government on the、uh, South China Sea issues are quite clear. Oh, I said too much. The speaker will be angry. And、uh, I'm afraid the、uh, moderator will not be happy if I say too much. The second question is about what the United States Senator Jim Jordan said about the importance of preserving our coastal areas. We should preserve our coastal areas. 我就说一句，呃，我们菲律宾人，呃，我们的这个目前目前的情况就是，菲律宾人在人眼角上缺吃、缺喝、缺水了吗？ And, uh, 如果我们中国真不让补给的话，会出现这种情况吗？ And the second is Our U.S. Navy friends have mentioned that the、uh, Philippin Filipinos are unable to、uh, resupply their people on the、uh, Renai Reef on their ship. So I have question, one question for everyone here: If the Chinese government stops them, forbids them from、uh, resupplying their people, did their people starve or? Uh, Uh, short of food, short of water, or short of other things, is it true? Thank you. Thank you. I understand there's another question. Okay, uh, the last、yes. question for me. Yes, as uh, Sri Lanka is、uh, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and、uh, to my understanding,、uh, Sri Lanka maybe is the division line of the. Uh, Eastern India Ocean and the Western India Ocean. So I find that the Gaur、uh, dialogue. It is the first time for me to be here, but I I have been to Gaur many many times,、uh, four times at least. So I think that、uh, next time maybe in order to create uh, uh, larger influence on this Gaur、uh, dialogue, I think that we we can invite some delegates from the Western India Ocean countries. That is the African continents,、uh, so that this Gaur、uh, dialogue can be more influential and、uh, to cover the, this whole India Ocean rim. Okay, this is my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment. Very perceptive observation.、Uh, may I take it that we could、uh, fast approaching the lunch hour? But I think we have had a very, very useful and productive discussion this morning, and I only wish to thank all the panelists most sincerely, and members of the audience who came up with a range of questions, and、uh, wish you a good lunch and to enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Rohan Pereira, for moderating this session, and the three speakers for presenting their insightful papers. Ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity to invite the Chief of Staff. Of Sri Lanka Navy Rear Admiral Jayant Kularatna, to hand over the mementos to the moderator and the speakers, please.
Vice Admiral Tarun Shokti, Rear Admiral Li Peng Ching. Rear Admiral Eric Rattenberg. Thank you very much, sir.